The day has arrived that I finally get to water my Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. Probably, maybe, I could have started the watering process three weeks ago. However, I was not entirely convinced back in the day that the roots were long enough. So I delayed it another three weeks. Welcome to this video. Here is a follow-up and update on the process of getting a catacetinae re-established after repotting in semi-hydroponics or LECA and self-watering. My Fred Clark Yara was divided when I did the repot she had outgrown the pot, otherwise I would not have gone in and cleaned out the root system to pot her up again. I do not do this every single year as is custom. As many other growers do, once I have a catacetinae in a pot, I let it grow like any other orchid until it outgrows its pot. It was time to give it a refresh. And this is what you see now from a division. Actually, we made three of them. And then I suspended the bulbs that were nice, plump and juicy on a stake so that when the roots grew, they would grow down into the pot where I only had a bottom layer of leca and everything else was empty. Turns out throughout that process, of course, the bulbs would start to shrivel as the energy was being consumed by the new growth the forming of roots, meaning that my bulbs slipped down a little bit on that stake. So I had to intervene and I raised the bulbs up again to the final height because the roots were already growing into the pot. The media hadn't been filled around yet. So I was waiting another couple of weeks to make sure that those roots that were growing into the pot would actually be long enough. And only then did I fill around with dry leca. Self-watering is obviously self-explanatory because everything happens on its own. I have microfibers growing through the pot and down into a reservoir provided by a mask. Similar situation would be in semi-hydroponics, except that there would be holes in the container with a little bit of a reservoir at the base. So because I wanted to monitor the progress and the length of the roots, this being a repot of a catacetinae as opposed to it just living in the pot and growing a new root system, I didn't fill the pot up until last minute and again with dry leca. Important to be using dry leca even though the system is self-watering. You don't want anything wet around the roots prematurely and putting wet leca around the roots prematurely could have exactly the same effect as if you were to water prematurely new roots would rot. I left it probably another three weeks and we have come to this situation and it would appear that I have just as many roots growing away from the media as I have growing into the media. I don't mind the ratio as long as I have 50% of the roots in the pot in the next year it will all balance itself out again. If I were using organic media I wouldn't have done what I did in this instance with Lekka. I would have potted the bulb at the level that they're supposed to be at and just wait and then water. So in the early stages of the setup, it is a little bit more cumbersome than it would be if you were to pot up a catacetinae in organic media. For me, it is worth it because these orchids are thirsty. As you can see, my bulbs are super deteriorated. They are not at the point of no return, but they're definitely only a shadow of what they were before. I had another little thing happen while this was all going on, and the lack of humidity in my climate has forced a leaf to grow and stay closed. If I had enough humidity in my environment, this would not have happened. This is not something because of lack of watering. This is solely because of no humidity. If I had not had to repot this orchid, and as in past years, I could have just let the orchid do its thing around other pots with a lot of leca, because my system is mainly leca and self-watering, this leaf would not have got caught up and would have developed normally. So what I did was just take a knife and just quickly slice it through to the point down at the apex and then opened it up a little bit. I also checked to see if this was continuing on with the subsequent leaves within that tube that had formed, but no, all the leaves in there are open and they're okay. Again, because there's a lot more humidity within that tube, it provided some form of protection. The outer leaf didn't have those benefits. So if that happens to your catacetinae, don't worry about it, it's very easy just to slice down along a vein, open the leaf up, 
and then everything is going to grow as per normal. And then there's another thing, all the beautiful, beautiful root tips of these now aerial roots, they are going to stop growing simply because I will not be able to maintain the requirement around them. It will not be humid enough. Never mind though, we have enough in the pot. So why not give this orchid its first proper drink? And what I do for that is take just some plain water, sorry for the jiggle, and just pour it through the pot. It's a complete and utter flush. And I do that with about a liter and a half of water. I'm just letting it run through, first contact with water, and then only a little bit of the runoff for humidity's sake will be in the reservoir. At this point in time, I am not filling the reservoir to the top to full capacity. It is the first watering, the first taste, so to speak. At this point in time, I can also leave the orchid outdoors. Because of the very harsh conditions, I needed her to be a little bit more protected and I had her indoors. The only reason being because she was newly repotted and has to start from scratch. In any other year, my catacetinae would have already been living outdoors, getting accustomed to the light levels. I wouldn't worry about harsh conditions. So this is all only because she was freshly repotted. For the next four waterings, I am going to be only flushing every second day, leaving just a smidgen in the reservoir of the runoff water. At this stage, it is not full on watering. There's barely anything at the base of this pot. I'm going to let that just get absorbed by the microfiber and that'll be it. No flushing tomorrow, but every second day for the subsequent four waterings, there will only be flushing and only with plain water. Now, seeing as I'm going to lose these aerial roots anyway, they will desiccate and get paper thin. I'm just going to show you how the water just creates pearls around those roots and how absolutely gorgeous that looks. You can see that on some roots, the velamen is starting to absorb water. Compare that to the velamen of the roots that are a little bit shorter. It gives you a very clear picture of what happens in the pot and why it's always advisable. Do not water your catacetinate too soon. The shorter roots are not absorbing anything. The longer roots are, and this is a very clear example if you were ever in any doubt as to how long your roots should be before they are ready to accept water without the risk of anything rotting out. So it is go time, it is grow time for my Fred Clark Yara after dark. This is the only orchid I wanted to show in this video. The other one has something else. I don't want to make this video so long. We're going to look at the other one, my Jack of Diamonds, in a separate video because certain things have happened there as well, which are a little bit astounding and should be discussed completely separately. I hope this was of interest. Now we monitor how the bulbs are going to recover. And from now on, she's going to live on the east side of my patio, behind the white curtain, getting accustomed to stronger light, but definitely not in direct sun. I hope that this was helpful. I really appreciate the time you took watching the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer anything and everything that comes my way. Have yourselves a fabulous day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.